Hi, it's Maura Gamble from our Permaculture Life and the Permaculture Education Institute. Um, every day at five o'clock, I'm going live talking about a different plant that we can grow really easily to increase the abundance of food that we have available to us, particularly in this time of, of COVID-19 when you know it's, it's challenging to get out and about and we, we're really looking for things that we can grow quickly and easily in our own homes and in and around our neighborhoods. So there's more to the little sweet potato than meets the eye. There is so, so much that you can do with this plant and particularly um, in terms of it growing very, very easily. So mostly the sweet potato is something that is grown in um, warmer climates. So anywhere that's fr frost free, you can pretty much grow it year round, but you can in a cooler climate um, grow it as an annual plant. As long as you've got at least sort of four months of frost, frost free time, you can grow it and harvest it. So um, all you need to grow a sweet potato basically is a sweet potato. So you can actually chop this up and plant segments of it and then it will start to throw shoots at one end, roots at the other, and then as that develops, it'll throw new roots out. But it's not actually this particular part of the plant that I wanted to talk about as important as it is. I mean, this this the sweet potato has been around, oh my gosh, it's maybe one of the earlier plants that was cultivated, been around for about 8,000 years and came originally from South America, Central South America area. And it was really interesting actually to note. So in about 1452, the Spanish took it across to Europe. But before then, Polynesians actually found their way across to Central and South America and brought it across to their islands. So it's been growing there for longer than it has in Europe. But like I said, there's more about um, eating this plant than, than just the root. Actually, one of the main parts of this plant that I eat all the time while I'm waiting for the roots is the shoot. So sweet potato leaves are in many parts of the world um, a, a very common green. Um, they're not so common to find, you, you actually don't find them in the shops here in Australia pretty much at all, but sweet potato greens are such an easy um, green to grow and it's fantastic because you can, you can eat it raw as well as cooked and you can eat the young leaves, you can eat the shoots and you can eat the older leaves. The younger leaves are nicer, but if you've got mostly just older leaves, if you just kind of um, boil them up a little bit, it, it makes them a little bit more tender and soft. So then you can chop them up and add them into anything else. Um, they're great. Um, you can add them straight into a, a green smoothie as well. So there's not like other leafy greens that have oxalic acid. And so the versatility, both of the root as well as the, the leafy greens makes this such a fantastic plant. Now, if you, um, if you're in a, an environment where actually um, growing the roots is not going to work because you don't have a long enough warm season, you can simply even just grow it for this leafy green. You can grow it in a pot on your veranda. You can even grow it in a, in a hanging basket so that these tendrils of greens hang down and you can just snip them off and use them in your cooking. Uh, you can even sprout a sweet potato on your bench top and then snip the greens off that too. So um, you can also start the sweet potato by planting a little what they call a slip so even a section as small as this I would plant that underground horizontally like this and just press down some compost on top they like it to be fairly loose and, and free draining underneath but what I found even if you're starting a no-dig garden for the first time and it's quite compacted underneath just add heaps of um, some mulch and compost material on top and then you'll find you as you fossick around you'll find them all in and amongst that so it's a very very easy plant to grow um, not very many um, pests or disease issues um, and just super abundant now from a from a permaculture perspective being able to have something that you can eat on both ends is really useful but I also really like to have it as um, as a living mulch in and around underneath my fruit trees so it creates this um, beautiful protection of the soil and the root zone um, and also when you look inside quite often you find you know there's there's frogs and there's lizards and there's all sorts of things living in and around underneath that because it creates this beautiful habitat for other things to live there too um, a relative of Kang Kong the water spinach um, and so both of those plants, if you had both of them, you create an absolute abundance of, of leafy green food uh, for, your, for your home and, and enough to share. You know, if you gave someone a snip of that, then that's a fantastic gift because they'd be able to then go and get their own sweet potatoes started too. So um, I'm going to um, come tomorrow again at, at five 
um, and talk about another plant that you can grow. Um, I hope you give sweet potato a go because it's just such a, a brilliant plant. Um, in the meantime, um, you can check out, I have a COVID-19 um, resilience care pack, which has a combination of a whole lot of different uh, films and blogs that I think would be really useful to help you get a garden started at this time. Um, I'll put the link for that as well. Um, and I also have a four part series that I've just released about permaculture, which goes through what is permaculture, how you can integrate permaculture into your way of life and your livelihood too, and how to actually get started with learning about permaculture. Um, so check out more about what's going on throughout all of my YouTube channel here, because there are well over a hundred films. And I know that there's gonna be heaps in here that you can actually use to help you get started to grow a thriving and abundant garden. Okay, catch you next time, bye.